Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, my dear students of the course Biopharmaceutics and Pharmacokinetics 2, uh, third year students, Ajman University. Today will be our uh, last topic and we will be talking about clinical applications of pharmacokinetics. Or in another way, we can say clinical pharmacokinetics. So we will talk about the applications of uh, uh, pharmacokinetic principles that we talked about previously. طبعاً, when we say application, application uh, is uh, or happens in the hospital to usually individual patients where individual patient where we need to uh, individualize the therapy for such a patient. Okay. طيب, what we will be talking about. We need to know what do we mean by therapeutic drug monitoring. A service that is provided in the hospitals. We provide it by what we call a clinical pharmacy service. They provide therapeutic drug monitoring. The abbreviation for this one is TDM. So TDM refers to therapeutic drug monitoring. طبعاً, monitoring means we are watching what happens to the patient after we design the dosage regimen for this patient. Uh, we need to uh, make sure that everything we do is going fine. Otherwise, maybe the patient will suffer from some toxicity or maybe subtherapeutic uh, doses uh, is being designed for the patient. We need to monitor the patient. But do we monitor any patient? That's what we will be talking about. Also, we uh, will talk very briefly about the analytical methods. طبعاً, normally, when you do monitoring, you need, uh, uh, in many cases, to collect blood or plasma or serum. Uh, blood samples from the patient. طبعاً, من blood you can get uh, either the serum or you can get the plasma. طبعاً, when we say uh, serum, uh, this means that it's uh, devoid of uh, fi fibrin, fibrogen. Okay, يعني the clotting material is uh, removed. أما the plasma, we only remove the uh, cellular matter. فبضل البروتينز والفيبرين فيبرينوجين بضلهم موجودين they remain there so we will talk about the analytical method and I will tell you why we need to talk uh, about this analytical method then we will talk about special population or مش special population uh, certain population groups mainly we will talk about the very young people اللي هم اللي newborns we, very old people, uh, we will talk, or we will call them elderly. طيب, uh, the clinical pharmacy service, طبعاً, this happens in clinics or in hospitals, where a pharmacist will be involved in the measurement and interpretation of uh, concentrations from patients. يعني, they will take sample from patients and they will measure the concentration of the drug. طبعاً, the reason why they do that is, again, monitoring. يعني, you designing a dosage regimen, you give it to the patient, and after a certain period of time, you are checking or you are asking the patient to come to the clinic, you are taking blood samples, plus, of course, you are uh, visually uh, uh, interview the patient and see if there are some symptoms uh, uh, that uh, happen with the patient. For example, uh, maybe there is a sign of uh, toxicities that the patient can tell you about. Uh, in addition, of course, uh, the main thing here is you measure the concentration of the drug in this patient to make sure that they are within the therapeutic window. طبعاً, here we have to, to say something. Now, uh, sometimes because of interpatient variability, maybe a therapeutic concentration in one patient 
maybe it's toxic in another patient or subtherapeutic in another patient. So we have also uh, not only rely on uh, measurement and interpretation of the uh, concentration of the drug in the plasma, but also we have to uh, watch the sign and symptoms that happen with the patient. Type when uh, therapeutic drug monitoring uh, becomes important. How, for example, someone comes to me with a headache, so I give him paracetamol. Do I need to monitor this patient and maybe after a while I will take blood samples from this patient? طبعا uh, this is uh, not feasible, not needed and not correct and waste of time and money because a headache comes and uh, goes and maybe you only need to uh, need the patient to take it for one day or a couple of days and that's it. So there is no uh, therapeutic drug monitoring in this case. So when uh, therapeutic drug monitoring becomes important. طبعاً, the first thing and the most important thing اللي هي when uh, and this is very important this is the most important point when the drug has narrow therapeutic toxic range narrow therapeutic toxic range طيب what does it mean? خلينا, let me uh, draw for you to tell you about the therapeutic window, you have the uh, concentration, okay, you have the time, uh, you have the concentration, and you have window. Had a window, of course, maybe you studied about it, MTC, minimum toxic concentration, and MEC. Now, we want the concentration of the drug to remain in this area, so we get a, ther a therapeutic effect. Now, when, when do we say that we have narrow therapeutic uh, window? No, this is narrow. Now, I will give you a general rule, okay? It can vary a little bit, but a general rule that when the ratio of minimum toxic concentration to minimum effective concentration is from 2 to 4, okay, then we consider this a narrow therapeutic window drug. طيب اللي هم الدراجز العادية, the normal drugs that are not having narrow therapeutic window, they can have a ratio of 100 and 1000 even, because uh, they are considered uh, safe uh, drugs, okay? So we will consider the minimum, uh, sorry, we will consider the drug to be narrow therapeutic window drug normally or generally when the ratio of MTC to MEC ranges from 2 to 4. Again, this range is not uh, a sharp cutoff, okay? Now, خلينا نيجي لهون. This MTC, I have to say, and MEC, you have to know that they are not uh, sharp cutoff. Yani, it doesn't mean for all people, if it goes more than MTC, then we will have toxic effects. No, some people, they will have therapeutic effect even at larger concentration than MTC. Also, some, some patients will have uh, therapeutic effect even below the MEC. High range, I want you to know that these are averages. يعني هذا عبارة عن average from population. So it can be different uh, in the individuals. طيب, the second uh, reason why we may need to uh, do therapeutic drug monitoring is that we have high variability in pharmacokinetic parameter values. For example, the clearance is very different. Mathalan, let's say range from 5 to uh, 20 ml per minute, مثلاً. for example. I'm just giving you an example. So in this case, the pharmacokinetic parameter varies a lot. It can be low, it can be high. Uh, high variability make, 
makes makes it difficult for us to design a dosage regimen. فبالتالي we will uh, not rely only in the average and leave the patient, but we will have to monitor the patient. كمان when the therapeutic effect is or cannot be readily uh, assessed. For example, when we give uh, certain antibiotics to a patient with infection, okay, uh, this antibiotic might be having a toxic effect, يعني because it's exceeding, let's say, the minimum toxic concentration. But I am not able to readily assess that. يعني أنا مش قادر أحكي. I cannot say whether uh, the effect that I am seeing is because of the toxic concentration of antibiotic or is it because of the infection to which I have given the antibiotic, okay? وبرضو كمان also it becomes uh, therapeutic drug monitoring becomes important when I'm trying to avoid something that does not happen regularly. For example, Caesar, anti-epileptic drugs. I need to know uh, that the concentration of the drug in the plasma or in the body is uh, within the therapeutic window in order to avoid the seizure happening, okay? Uh, I cannot just wait and see how many seizures per uh, year will happen and then decide that the dose is correct or not. So I have to look at the concentration and make sure that everything is good. Also, it's very important if I want to take a plasma sample that there is really a relationship between the concentration in the plasma and the pharmacological effect. Because if there is no correlation between both, then it will be useless to take the, uh, the plasma sample and measure the concentration. Uh, so I, why I want to measure the concentration? Because I'm expecting to have correlation with the pharmacological effect. I hope you remember in the early uh, chapter, I talked about pharmacokinetic homogeneity. Uh, pharmacokinetic homogeneity. I will write it here again. Okay. Pharmaco. Kinetic homogeneity. Okay, so uh, I hope you remember this, which we talked about. Shukan al hadaf. What was the uh, term here? The term says that there is a relationship between the concentration of the drug in the plasma and that at receptor site. وفي الريسبتور سايت شو بيسوي؟ What does it do the drug اللي هو gives the pharmacological effect. Okay, uh, another thing which uh, will allow you to do therapeutic drug monitoring is to have an accurate short, uh, short turn around يعني it quickly it gives the result to inexpensive analytical method to uh, uh, analyze the plasma samples because as you know if I don't have it in the hospital or in the clinic I will either not do it or it will uh, I have to send it to somewhere else where it's gonna take more time and it will be more expensive type also I will need to do a therapeutic drug monitoring if I'm not getting the ex the expected Therapeutic effect. يعني I'm giving the uh, dose, but I'm not getting the therapeutic effect, and the dose is correct. So maybe it's because there is a problem in the drug absorption, or maybe there is a problem in compliance. Okay. شو يعني compliance? يعني the patient is taking the medication as instructed. طيب. Also. Therapeutic drug monitoring becomes important for drugs with high first pass effect. Uh, and we talked about this in metabolism. يعني شو حكينا في الميتابوليزم? We said if for example 90% of the drug that enters from the GIT to the liver gets metabolized, 
معناته بضل 10 رايت 10 بيرسون طيب if 95 which is not very much different percent of the drug is metabolized in another person because of genetic uh, 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 variability between patient معناته صار عندنا 5% of the drug gets into the systemic circulation هلا ال 10 if I look at 10 and the 5% actually this 10 is double the amount that gets to the systemic circulation in this case okay so in such cases I have to monitor and see how things are happening هل is the concentration as I expect or is it different and why طيب also if a patient has altered or variable renal state في عنا patients uh, the uh, kidney function keeps changing continuously فبالتالي I have to continuously إيش change the dosing rate that I give I give to the uh, patient so in this case I have to monitor the patient and make the adjustment uh, of the dosing accordingly طبعا here you have examples of drug with drugs with a narrow therapeutic window for example aminoglycosides زي الجنتامايسين والتوبرامايسين منلاقي ال peak concentration uh, our, uh, highest concentration that we can give 4 to 10 and the trough is uh, trough طبعا ال minimum concentration should be between 0.5 to 2 microgram per ml الدجوكسين من from 0.8 to 2 nanogram per ml phenytoin from 10 to 20 microgram per ml theophylline from 10 to 20 uh, microgram per ml فشوفوا كيف الراتيو 10 to 20 يعني الراتيو 20 divided by 10 بيطلع 2 اه اللي هو ال MTC divided by MEC هون نفس الشيء here uh, 2 divided by 0.8 بيطلع لنا 2 and 2 uh, and half ف you will see that uh, the uh, range of the ratio of MTC to MEC for narrow therapeutic window drug راح يكون as I explained previously from 2 to 4 طيب now let's suppose a patient comes to you and uh, you need to give this patient a narrow therapeutic window drug just like what you see here ف what you need to do طبعا first you need to look at the patient information which includes the age, weight, sex, height, whether uh, the patient is smoker or not and do maybe a liver test, liver function test, uh, look at the kidney, uh, see the serum creatinine to uh, know about the kidney, look at the cardiac output. اللي هو blood uh, blood flow هل maybe the patient is having congestive heart failure or not because these factors can affect the dose that you are giving you might need for example to have half of the dose because of some uh, complications in the patient such as uh, liver problem or renal problem or cardiac uh, problem okay so you need to inquire about all, uh, to look at all the parameters that might affect uh, dosing. And then based on the population pharmacokinetic, you can start and get ish and design the dosage regimen. Min high information, you will know what is the clearance of the drug. You know already what is the therapeutic window, so you'll start to uh, calculate and initiate your maybe loading dose and maintenance dose uh, similar if you remember uh, to the uh, uh, what we talked about for multiple IV bolus administration so we can do that okay now because you need to do therapeutic drug monitoring it means that after a while you will need 
to ask the patient to come again and you will organize a sample collection for analysis okay طيب why you want to do that you want طبعا to make sure that the uh, dosage regimen that you have created for uh, or designed for this patient is uh, giving you a concentration that is within the therapeutic window طيب طبعا you will uh, usually wait until you reach the steady state اه اذا بتتذكروا if you remember في non-linear pharmacokinetics how did we calculate uh, a dosage regimen okay first uh, we took from the average of population بعدين uh, if we don't get the right concentration then we start modifying and then after getting again uh, the steady state we reached the steady state we took a sample we see it and then again based on two dosage regimen or two dosing rates and two concentrations we were able to calculate the required parameters now it is similar here we want to make sure that at steady state we are getting to the concentration required uh, طبعاً, we are not only relying on analysis but as I said we need to see or to look at any signs and symptoms that might be associated with the therapy طيب, when we do collection of samples and we analyze it's very important that we stick to the timing يعني, for example here maybe I'm taking the uh, sample at 3 hours and again at 8 hours مثلا, for example at 3 and 8 I have to be exact يعني, I have to make sure that I'm taking the sample at the required time because if you see here in the graph any small change في sample time can result in uh, change في parameters for example see little change في time sample times خلى عندي half life that I'm calculating is becoming uh, really uh, different okay شوفوا هنا في اختلاف بنسبة almost uh, 20% 15% to 20% to 25% they differ from each other so because we want we don't want to do any mistake we have to make sure that the timings are correct when we take the sample and measure the concentration طيب, based on that we can evaluate the results and we have to be smart when we do the uh, evaluation and based on that we may need to recalculate the dosage regimen and make recommendation okay binaan ala now i'm looking at this individual this person uh, uh, i want to individualize the uh, dosage regimen for example maybe this patient is having some variability from others so i'm adjusting that and if necessary i may ask this patient to come again and i may repeat the procedure again yani analyze take samples analyze them and based on the results i may need to ish to redesign the dosage regimen nowadays we have a lot of computer and uh, computer programs or calculators that will uh, allow uh, the uh, analysis of the results more quickly and uh, based on that we can make recommendation طيب, how do we do the analysis of samples طبعا, there are several methods many of them are uh, based on antibodies uh, for, they call it for example radioimmune assay enzyme multiplied immunoassay technique uh, fluoroimmunoassay but we have also the HPLC here I'm not going to talk about each one and how it works this this is maybe uh, you study it in pharmaceutical analysis but what I want to uh, emphasize here is that the method that we use should be fast for example it can give me the results in two to three hours 
and it should give me uh, accurate results for the concentration of the drug within the therapeutic range okay now here you will see I added something which was not in your note اللي هو a say kit package insert for example when you uh, when you want for example to test uh, a certain drug for example gentamicin vancomycin etc uh, in order to test it using uh, immunoassay you need uh, the assay kit which includes the antibodies so uh, this assay kit will uh, have a leaflet to telling you, we call it package insert, assay kit, package insert, the leaflet of the drugs. So when you want to do the assay of the drug, this leaflet will tell you how you should do your assay and what are the expected, for example, uh, complication and will tell you about the specificity, uh, specificity يعني how the assay is specific and it will tell you if there are some uh, materials uh, normally present in the body in the plasma مثلا that can affect the analysis so we need to watch out for a couple of things one اللي هو cross reactivity cross reactivity والمقصود فيها in the drug for example, is having a metabolite that is very close in structure to the parent drug, and uh, this metabolite might affect the result of the assay. So we call it cross reactivity. Uh, reactivity. And physiologic interference, they, like bilirubin or some other materials uh, in the plasma that may affect the. Uh, results of the assay method so that's why I told you, you need to be smart smart يعني you need to see and to check لما تشوف results not normal not as you expected إنه ممكن يكون في عنا we have maybe a problem of specificity or maybe physiologic interference or maybe the timing of the samples uh, was not correct okay I will not go through these methods, but you need to memorize the titles such as HPLC, GLC, uh, RIA, or RIA, EMIT, EMIT. Uh, these are some of the common uh, analysis methods on instruments used to determine the drug concentration in the plasma or serum sample. Okay. Uh, as student, you should know what is the difference between blood, plasma, and serum. Okay, in many cases, we use serum uh, samples in order to do the analysis. Okay. Okay. Now we will get to the uh, special population groups. Okay, and the first thing we will talk about is. Uh, regarding the age of the patients okay we refer to the uh, person as neonate uh, or a newborn when the baby is delivered from birth till four weeks يعني almost one month okay is an up to one month we call this uh, person or this uh, baby, we call him or her neonate or newborn. طيب, infant is up to one year, يعني when the child starts walking. Okay? And the child covers uh, the age ranging from birth to puberty. يعني للنضوج. Okay, then we need to know the uh, age groups. Hala, older people, when I say older people, I mean uh, with the age of 55 and above. And when they are 65 and above, I call uh, this group as elderly. Okay. 
طيب when I start with pediatric why they are a special group why we need to uh, uh, be careful when we give them the drug they are not just as normal adults the reason is in a lot of physiological process undergo maturation from the date of birth as the uh, baby grow becomes uh, adult so many changes happen these include changes in drug absorption drug distribution metabolism and excretion because of uh, these changes that are happening معناته i cannot treat the uh, pediatric population the same as i treat the adults additionally not only that but even when i take two uh, babies or two child or two children sorry with the same age there may be high variability in Uh, drug disposition between them. So, any yani disposition? Do you remember? It means drug absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion. Huh? So, even for the same age, we have variability between uh, uh, the individuals. طيب, what is the problem? The problem is that we have little data about uh, drug disposition, especially with infant. You know, I cannot just take infants, you know, take 100 infants, collect them from the families and start experimenting with them. That's why little data are available. And we have to know that the most dramatic changes occur in the first year. يعني معظم changes that happen and I have to be careful about is in the first year. طب بعد الفرست year, يعني second year and third, The adjustment of the dose can be made based on weight. Is an المشكلة بالفرست year. بعد الفرست year, I can do adjustment based on weight and uh, surface area or age. Okay. طيب, what are these changes? Let us talk about them. These changes include the absorption. We will see that there is a chlorohydria. في البيبيز اب تو ذا ايج اوف 3 اكلوروهايدريا معناها ذير از ليس اتش سي ال سكريشن ليس جاستريك اسيد سكريشن معناته البي اتش راح يكون في البيبيز اعلى اه هاير بي اتش طيب وات داز ذات مين ات مينز ذات فور ذا اسيد لاباي drugs زي البنسلين اللي بتأثروا في الأسد they will have increased bioavailability في the newborns ليش؟ because their stomach does not have a low pH or acidity is not high additionally البيبيز they have delayed gastric emptying and طبعا يعني it means that for the medicine or for the drug to get from the stomach to the intestine will intestine is where most of the absorption happen so in order for the drug to get to the uh, intestine it takes longer time and because of irregular intestinal uh, peristalsis so this leads to slower absorption of some drugs in infants and young children Okay. The peristalsis is the uh, peristalsis means the contractions uh, in the intestine. Okay. Okay. Regarding the distribution of the drug, the total body water as a fraction of body weight become for infants uh, become much higher than the adult. This is spe- specifically for the extravascular. Fluid. The uh, extravascular fluid is proportionally higher for infants. Actually, the total body water is higher. It's because of too much extravascular fluid. That's why the volume of distribution for some drugs, higher 
in the uh, uh, neonates, and that is especially for water soluble uh, uh, drug. طيب additionally شو اللي بيسوي complication كمان إنه acidic and basic drugs that bound to albumin اللي هو albumin is a basic so it binds acidic drug with the alpha one acid glycoprotein which bind basic drugs هدول الproteins they are less في ال uh, children okay they are less than in adults طيب كمان خاصة في newborns بيكون عندهم usually bilirubin عالي okay and this binds to albumin طيب معناته صار عندي ال unbound drug is higher and this will also increase the volume of distribution ليش؟ لأنه عندي more free drug so this more free drug will go and distribute uh, more into the peripheral tissues and co compartment okay طيب now we will talk about metabolism now we don't have just uh, one rule for everything uh, and different uh, pathway different drug uh, metabolism mature at different rates for example let us take examples to see uh, uh, something for example caffeine caffeine طبعاً, is related to theophylline also the caffeine اللي هو comes from coffee is very slowly metabolized in a newborn فبال first month الميتابوليزم or the elimination uh, of the caffeine takes very long time and actually the half life might be about four days عشان الكافيين يطلع half of it goes out and this mainly because of a, a minor elimination pathway اللي هو renal elimination and that's why it's taking four days. While when the uh, uh, the child becomes three to seven months, the cafeine uh, uh, metabolism will be similar to adult. وبرجه عنا الهاف لايف about five to six hours. طيب الثيوفيلين the half life شوف انتبهوا تلاتاش 13 to 29 hours في low birth weight infants طبعا kind of high شوفوا تبعون at 1 to 9 years ال half life is 3 and a half okay 3 and a half uh, looks good طيب شوفوا هاي 8 hours for adult non-smoker يعني تحول من 3 and half زاد ل 8 hours لما صار adult <تصفيق> يعني هو younger يبدو انه elimination for uh, younger people is much higher than the elimination for the adults وشوفوا اذا كان smoker فال half life بصير 5 hours now I have a question for you and if you really watch my video, you'll be able to answer and tell me the answer. So, this is how I will know if you watched my video or not. My question is, and don't just assume from yourself, I want you to do research. Uh, why is it in young children, the half-life is less than the half-life in the adults? يعني كأنه children they have better elimination than the adult طبعا this is I'm talking about theophylline I'm not talking about any drug okay طيب the second question is why the smokers they have half life less than non-smokers okay طبعا for those with hepatic impairment يعني عندهم مشكلة في الليفر ال half life بكثير عندنا ايش uh, 24 hours, sorry, not 12, 24 hours. فبدي uh, طبعا أنا أكيد هذا because of uh, less metabolism, right? طيب, the second question which I want to ask you, or the third question, is why 
It is also high for those with congestive heart failure. إذا صار عندنا ثلاث أسئلة. The first question: ليش الثيوفيلين uh, elimination في children is better than adults? Number two: Why the smokers uh, elimination is better than non-smokers? Number three: Why those with congestive heart failure بصير عنا uh, prolonged Elimination time or less elimination. Okay. Okay. في عنا كمان another uh, example of what happens في ال uh, newborns اللي هي glucuronidation which is inefficient at birth. فمثلا the chloramphenicol which is an antibiotic is normally glucuronated uh, uh, in adults. We, this is the major pathway in Yusullu glucuronidation. فبتلاقوا إنه في ال new birth at birth بتلاقي إنه the metabolism or glucuronidation is inefficient for chloramphenicol. أما sulfate conjugation بنلاقيها at birth it's well developed ما في عندها مشكلة ومثال عليها اللي هي the paracetamol. That's why we learn you know, then uh, يعني at birth when the uh, baby has uh, a fever we can give the baby مثلا paracetamol liquid or uh, suppository okay is an sulfation has no problem أما uh, drug like phenytoin when I had to phenytoin I told it's uh, the most important example. في اللي هو ميكاليس من تن كاينتك وين اخذتوا الميكاليس من تن كاينتك في النان لينير فارماكو كاينتك فوجدوا انه الفينايتوين الكي ام تاعه almost the same does not change with age وهذا uh, the question which I want to ask you is very similar to ثيوفيلين لكن شوفوا الفي ام شو الفي ام تتذكروها اللي هو الماكسيمم ريت اوف ميتابوليزم اللي هم من 6 مانث ل 6 ييرز بتكون 12 ملي جرام لكل كيلو جرام بير دي شوفوا لما كبروا لما كبروا الاولدر تشيلدرن اللي هم من 7 تو 16 نقص اه ناو اتس بيكمينج 9 يعني الماكسيمم ريت اوف ميتابوليزم وهم اصغر وايل دي ار يونجر كان بيتر Okay. Faizan, uh, this is also a question for you. Why the children here have better metabolism? Again. طيب, when we talk about uh, excretion, here we have to talk about اللي هو الجلومريال فلتريشن ريت وكمان اللي هو uh, the function of the renal tubules. وجدوا انه الجلومريال فلتريشن ريت بصير سيميلر تو ادلت فاليوز لما يوصلوا 6 مانث عشان هيك بتشوفوا هون ات 1 سوري ات ات فيرست 4 دايز شوفوا 1 ام ال بير مينيت لكل متر سكوير 14 دايز 22 6 مانث بيوصل الجي اف ار Similar to adults. أما the complete حتى اللي هو renal tubule, ف will achieve the adult values one to two months later. يعني at eight months بصير زي زي ال ال adult. Okay. And therefore, or that is why, بنلاقي إنه drugs like the gentamicin, the ampicillin, the thorazamide, اللي هم which these drugs they are Depending on uh, renal route for elimination, بنلاقي إنه في ال infants و neonates بنلاقي عندهم a prolonged elimination time عندهم. Okay. طبعا uh, in this table you will see a summary of uh, uh, certain values. To compare between adults and neonates, 
uh, I just highlighted this one to show you that the extracellular water fluid يعني في النيونيتس بتلاقوها ايش more than the intracellular اما هون شوفوا العكس طبعا I highlighted them in yellow because uh, I want you to depend on previous uh, uh, information that I gave you in uh, chapter 1 اللي هو uh, uh, single IV bolus administration or IV bolus administration with one compartment model I told you that the extracellular is 27 and the intracellular is 33 the extracellular 27 شوفوا uh, the total will give you about 60% أما في النيونيت شوفوا total water is 78% مقارنة 60% في الأدلس here are some examples of drugs I want you to look at them and try to understand what is happening okay uh, we'll stop now and we will continue uh, inshallah in uh, part 2 to complete this topic thank you and see you in part 2